All right, <clears throat> now that I've got everything uh, tested out with the breadboard, and I know it's working, I'm going to go ahead and create a little shield that I'll be able to attach to the Geiger counter. And I've actually already done it, so I'll just go ahead and show it to you. So I've got my four wires right here. You see, we've got four wires here. With these four wires going in, and basically this is going to the analog, this is going to the D2 pin, and the three volts and the ground right here, which I don't know if you can see on this unit, but there's also another uh, place where you can plug in to get that voltage. And I also use these headers. These things are nice because uh, you can go ahead and just plug your ESP unit right into it and uh, away you go. Of course you do have to do some soldering. I haven't completely finished all the soldering yet mainly because I might actually add to this board by adding a little um, small display to show you uh, what the CPMs or the USB are. Anyways, I used three of these for a reason. Um, basically because I've got two different sized ESP boards. One will fit on these inside rails, but the one that I'm using uh, right here is a little bit bigger so it will fit on the middle rails. Now the outside rails are just for testing. That's sort of like a built-in breadboard so if you want to use this shield for something else you could you know basically test it with anything. And so I welded these little pins in here so that I could connect this little cable. And now what I'm going to do is going to take all this stuff apart. I am going to take the back off of this unit and I am going to solder these wires in place. So basically when I'm done I should have sort of a, a cable coming out that I can just kind of fold back into the under the unit. And this cable obviously will connect to this which I plan on sitting on top of here somehow. Anyways, here we go. Alright, I finished uh, soldering my circuit. And before I put the back plate on, I'll just show you what I did there. Got my signal connected to the positive end of the light, the LED. And ground connected to the battery ground and power and my battery sensor connected to the positive battery ground. See my little cable. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in the module here and see if it works. Now you just got to take care, make sure you get the A0 pin in the right spot. And for this, it's going to be right there so if you get the A0 right everything else should fit properly alright now I'm going to go ahead and power this on by connecting it to my computer flip the power switch and hopefully it'll all just work perfect. Oh, there we go. Already getting a reading. And there we go. Everything's all set up. And eventually what I want to do is mount this board on top or I might just leave it uh, separate like that. But uh, there's a possibility I'll, I'll mount it to the board or put some sort of spacers on here and maybe add an OLED display. Anyways, uh, that's my hack. And as you can see, it's all being powered off this ESP unit. And there you have it. Alright, so I've got the base plate back on, screwed back on. And you can kind of see the wiring uh, 
through the clear plexiglass. Uh, for this kit, I actually added my own little clear rubber bumpers here so that I could stick it on a surface and not worry about these screws scratching anything. It's kind of nice, rises it up a little bit. And when I'm not using uh, the entire setup, I want it to be able to easily just fold this and tuck it in here. And so there you go. It works as I intended. So if you just want to use your uh, Mighty Ohm by itself, standalone with some batteries, you still can. You just uh, put your batteries in and turn it on. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and uh, connect this unit because I'm going to go ahead and start working with it, doing some testing, and see what we get. Now this. I had these little guys switched. There we go. Got them in the proper alignment for where they need to go. And take this off first just because it's right in my way. Alright. So the guy plugged in. Alright. And now I'll connect power source. Come on now. <laughs> uh, these little mini things. There we go. There we go. Back on. Make sure power's on here. And plug it into the computer. Would help. Now we're on. And just waiting to see if we get any. Oh, there we go. And since I connected uh, my D2 pin to the light instead of the beeper here, I can now turn off the beeper. And uh, it goes silent and it still records the clicks. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit about uh, the code and the application itself, uh, how to use it a little bit, and uh, there you go. All right, so pretty much got everything the way I want it to be. I can set this thing on top of here. If I put the right size screws, I can screw it right on top of there, but I don't. So I'm just going to do this. As it is, as a standalone uh, stepper wood unit there. Um, this little unit I've been testing for quite a while now, and it's actually got quite a bit of data stored up, which I don't want to delete. Uh, we're up to 200 or 2,466 records, and that's well over 38 hours of data. So what I'm going to do is take a brand new one here and then open it up. And I'm going to use this one so it be nice and white. That way I can show you how the data is deleted and things like that. I do believe this one is a little smaller, so it'll be nice to check out the other connection. And one of the things is when you first use this, uh, I've got it set up so it flashes the uh, memory so you can write files to it. That takes about 30 seconds, but after that file has been created, it doesn't do that anymore. So that's something to keep in mind that the first time you upload the code and operate this, it's going to take 30 seconds just to flash the memory file. So if you're trying to access it via the web or anything like that, it's going to, you're not going to get much. You're going to have to wait 30 seconds just for that. Then it's going to connect and start recording. Alright, so I put my new board in and it's actually on a different port. It's on port 5, COM 5. So I had to change that. 
in the tools there, COM5. And now I'm going to upload uh, the sketch for the first time and see if, uh, see what happens. I'm open the serial port as well. And that should tell us about the flash file. It's going to take about 30 seconds or so to flash the memory on this thing. And anyways, it's just compiling the sketch. And we'll be uploading here in a second. Uh, so I'm using a different board than the one I originally started with and did all my testing. I wanted to preserve the data. And so I'm going to use a fresh board here and hopefully we can get everything uploaded and working. And then I can show you everything on this device, which is uh, made by someone else, but I'm hoping is just about the same. And we're still uploading here. And oh, there we go. Waiting for the SPIS file to be formatted. That's what I was looking for. Just took a while for whatever reason with this uh, new board. And, yep, gotta wait 30 seconds. Takes a while. Wait for it. There we go. Now it's connecting to my Wi Fi. There's the IP. Looks like it's recording data. Let's check the website. It should be up now. Refresh. And this data should be clear because we're on a whole different uh, module now, so all that memory should be completely clean. See, there we go. Starting fresh. Alright, so this is going to take a little while, a minutes, anyways, to get up to speed so it doesn't have any data entries yet still needs to collect a minute's worth and it should have done that by now so I'm going to go ahead and refresh and here we go so it's got at least one minute in there Let's see we've got our first two dots showing up Data points. And after another minute, it will have more data. So let's go ahead and start going over the code. We'll take a look at this later again and uh, go from there. <laughs> 